Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Today's exclusive interview ahead of the League Cup final this weekend between St Johnston and Livingston at Hamden. We have a 2004 League Cup winner with the Lions, the last time they won a major honour in Scottish football. They've had an amazing rise up the leagues, Livy, in recent years. Um, fans don't need to be reminded of it. They're reminded often enough of how they went from League One to now they're a top six Premiership side at present and are competing for one of the major domestic trophies against St Johnson this weekend. We spoke to Emmanuel Dorado um, about his success with Livingston 2004, what it was like to be part of that squad and his own career. I mean, I don't think many people in football can say they've gone from PSG as a youngster to finishing off as a League Cup winner at Livingston. In fact, I'll pretty much, I've not got any research to hand, but I'll put my money on the table and say he is the only one to have done that. So, yeah, very interesting chat. He's coaching now in France. He tells us all about how his life is at present, his memories with Livingston, the good and the bad, and his thoughts on the weekend's match. Um, big thanks to him for taking part in this. We'll have plenty more exclusive interviews as well before the weekend as well as some build-up on our website, not the old firm, .com. And those two future interviews will be with current St Johnson Livingston players. So do keep an eye out for that. And if you haven't checked out our St Johnson um, exclusive interview with a former player, do check that out. That's already been on the channel this week with Danny McNamara. He was at St Johnson earlier this season has now signed a long-term deal at Millwall off the back of that. So do check that out if you get a spare 20 minutes. Right, enough of my rambling. Here is our interview with Emmanuel Dorado. Do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, take easy. It's very, I have one in my house and one in my family house with my parents. I have two of them. All right, okay, so you, you've taken mementos um, from your time at Livingston back to France, I can see. Great. Of course, of course. Great day. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get started then just on that. Um, okay. Um, given that we can see that you've got the, the frame in your living room at two houses, um, great memories. Yes, uh, obviously Livingston and with the victory in 2004 is one of the best memory in my football career. Uh, I have three things very important in my career. It's one cup that we win with Paris Saint-Germain, with the young team, uh, Livingston and Malaga. Malaga in Spain was obviously uh, something beautiful, but Livingston still one of the top because, uh, because in Scotland it's very difficult to win something. If you take off uh, uh, Celtic or Rangers, it's very difficult to win. So it was an, a very good uh, remember. Yeah. Um... Because I was looking at your um, your career and stuff, um, your playing days are perhaps a wee bit before I can remember football. Um, but looking at it, um, going from Paris Saint-Germain to Livingston over the course of your career, um, you might be the only one to do that, I think. Well, before to go to Livingston, I was uh, I was first in Paris Saint-Germain, obviously, but after I, w I was in Spain. And, uh, and I finished in, uh, in, in Scotland, my career. But if I am honest with you, if I could come back in the past, I will go to Scotland and to Livingston younger. Because uh, I, I go to Scotland a little late and it was uh, the end of my career, part of the end of my career. But if I could come back in the past, I would enjoy to come back to Scotland very younger. Yeah. Um, obviously, Malaga are a, a quite a big club in Spain. Um, what sort of level are we talking you were playing at before you came to Livingston? Uh, when, when I was in Malaga, we were in second, in first division, and we go to the top, we win the champions of, of first division, and we go to the Liga. And uh, after it was quite more difficult because they, they signed the... They signed the... the the son of the German of Real Madrid in my position. So it's quite difficult to find a space, you know? <laughs> so, so after I must to find something and when uh, my agent offered me to go to Scotland, my friend Javier Sanchebroto, the goalkeeper, was in Spain, in Limiston, and he told he tell to me, come on Manu, it's very good in Scotland, it's a very nice country, people are very nice, football is good. 
you will enjoy. So I come to, to Livingston. Mm -hmm. Was that um, quite, a, even though you were late in your career, quite a big career decision? Because I can imagine having played for PSG in Malaga, you probably hadn't heard much of a club that had been formed about 10 years at that point. Yes, but I, I enjoy the Scottish mentality when I arrived to Scotland. The people were so nice with us. Uh, the, the club of Livingston, even if it was a small club, was very friendly and there is all the option to be good uh, for training, for the rest. The organization is, was very professional and I enjoy, to be honest, very a, a lot of, I enjoy a lot of to be in Scotland and Livingston, really. How much different was it, sort of? Because I can imagine um, when players come up to Livingston from England, they always say the weather's bad. And I'd never understand it because it's the same country. However, in this case, I can imagine going from Spain to Livingston quite a shock. Well, to be honest, to be honest, I am going to be honest with you. It was the worst thing that I was in Scotland. It was the weather. Yeah. Because honestly, I was coming from Malaga and I don't know if you know Malaga or not. Hmm. But I, I live in the summer to, I live from Malaga in t-shirt and very sunny. And I travel to Scotland to visit, to see what, what was the club. And when I arrived to Malaga, to Livingston, sorry, it was so cold and so gray, so dark. So that I say, I never come, I can't play here. But after I changed my mind and I said, okay, I'm going to try because I want to, to see, to prove myself that I can play everywhere. Yeah, I can imagine, because um, obviously you, you found out it was a great club, but at the start, it was probably quite, a, though I say a drop in quality, but it's probably not what you were used to in terms of the standard you had been playing at. Well, I think that um, even the people today are very confused about the level of Scottish football. or It's not easy at all. Uh, really, uh, even if you come from Spain, from France, from Italy, wherever you come from, when you go to Scotland, uh, you need to be prepared and you need to have uh, strength, you need to have, uh, you need to be fit, you need to very good mentality and fighter. Because if you won't think that you're going to be relaxed and play easy, you are dead. So honestly, I was very surprised about the football because obviously, uh, I still thinking that Scottish football should be up in the classification of the world, because I don't think that everything is done to be at the top. But when you play the with Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, Hibs, it's quite difficult to play, to be honest. Yeah, because um, those clubs are obviously well documented. And even now, um, the standard is probably, it's not until you get to Scottish football, the down south, it usually gets entitled Farmers League. Um, non-league standard people call it but when these players actually come up to Scotland they realise hold on a minute here this is um, this is a bit more difficult than I was expecting exactly exactly it's not so easy and uh, when to be honest when I was in Scotland it was the very good um, the very good uh, time for Scottish football there is uh, uh, Larson Henry Larson Sutton Kanija uh, the football was very very good to be honest and uh, I think the lead Little by little, I don't know the football yet in Scotland, how we see it now. But uh, I'm not sure that the, the level is the same that when I was in Scotland, that there is a... I think Celtic, I don't know if they make a final or, or win the cup in European League. You, they were in the UEFA Cup around 2003-2004 time in Seville. Um, and then Rangers got to the UEFA Cup four years later. So particularly on the continent at that time, whilst obviously not... Um, it's not like the 80s when Dundee United and Aberdeen were getting to Yes, Aberdeen, yes, yes, yes. You still had teams in Scotland and Aberdeen as well were playing Bayern Munich at that time in the UEFA Cup. So it was um, it was in a very good place at that time, Scottish football. There's one player that's always fascinated me about this time at Livingston. And he didn't actually play all that much, but I was looking, I think he was there for the time you were there. And I'm going to completely butcher his first name because I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, Guilherme Amor from Barcelona. Guilherme Amor. Yes, Guilherme Amor. Yes. He's, even though he never played, it always fascinated me because he's played in World Cups, hundreds of appearances for Barcelona. How did he end up there? And, and today, it was a, it's one of the managers of Barcelona, Guilherme Amor. 
He's still yeah. in, the, in Barcelona. Well, to be honest, I was very surprised, but I, the first year when I arrived to, to Livingston, I, have, I suffered an, a knee injury. Mm -hmm. So I come back to France and I just spend with him a uh, few weeks, few months. I don't spend a lot of time with him. We, we go a lot of time to eat, to the open lunch in Edinburgh. There is a bar, open lunch, we used to go to eat. But uh, I was very surprised too and say, Guillermo Amor is a wonderful reference in Spanish football. He played for Barcelona, he was international with the national team. So I was very surprised, but uh, I, 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 I see him in, in, in Emerson. I, I was with big highs because he was a, an a impressive man. Yeah, I suppose that um, encapsulated Scottish football at that time because you had um, Dundee spending lots of money, Model at that time before going into administration spent lots of money. So um, I clearly, I had to be born 10 years earlier, I think, because I think I missed out on the madness of it all. Yes, obviously. Today the money is, is quite more difficult because there's the virus, uh, the COVID-19 or everything like this. But in this time... Uh, there is a, no a lot of, but there is money and the player can move very well. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, um, ahead of the League Cup final um, this week, it was a squad you were involved in and touched on it at the start. But um, did you quite realise what a trophy to a club like Livingston meant? Because these finals, this is the first final um, since um, 2004. They don't come about very often. Well, it's, uh, I'm very happy, to be honest, for Livingston. Well, I will be more happy when they win because I think uh, I'm very happy for the supporter. I'm very happy for the, for the club because, uh, honestly, it was, uh, we have quite hard time in Livy when we are in administration. It was not easy to see some player leaving like Camacho, some player like this, they must leave for the money. But... Uh, now they have a good opportunity Levy, to come back at the top in the Scottish Cup. And I think it's, uh, it's very good for Scottish football even because it's not just one, two, one or two teams. There is more teams that they can win something. And I think it's very important, but uh, I, wish, I wish they were going to win. Have you kept up to date with um, Livingston in recent times? It's, um, they've been through a bit of a change with David Martindale at the, the helm. They've won a lot of games in a row recently. Um, not one in Three, I think, heading into this, but the club appeared to be in a very good place. Sorry, I don't understand you. Sorry. Um, they've they've got a new manager in. Just yes, I see. I follow. Yes, I follow. If you've been, yeah, I don't know if you've been keeping up, but um, yeah, they're doing very well at the moment, albeit they haven't won in three games. Yes, I, I see. It was a uh, incredible because when they when he catch when he take the team, I think we're in the top, well, in the bottom of the league. And they managed to win, I don't know how many games. And they just lose uh, last week, I think, against Dundee or something like this. Dundee, yeah. I watched 3-0 or something like this. But until this moment, win, 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 win. So I was, oh, it's unbelievable. And very good for very good job from the manager, honestly. Yeah, you're very good. Um, will you be tuning in to the, the cup final this weekend if you get time? If I remember the things. Will you, will you be um, tuning in to the League Cup final? Will you be watching from home um, this weekend? If I'm going to watch the game of Livingston? Yeah. Yes, obviously, I will. Well, I have different uh, channels, so I will... What, do you know why it's going to be on the TV? Which channel is going to be on? Um, I couldn't tell you the French TV channels. As you can imagine, my French TV knowledge probably isn't as good no, as... No, but in, in Scotland, it's going to be in but, some channel in Scotland? Yes? yes, it'll be on Premier Sports here in Scotland, so I'm pretty sure you can get it through the App Store. Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to find some solution to see it because uh, I want to, to see the game, I want to enjoy the game, obviously, and I want to be uh, one more supporter of, of Livingston, even if I'm a little sad because... In my in 2004, the Hamden Park was full, and it's not the same to play with a empty stadium when you have your supporter pushing you. It's some atmosphere different. Mm. Yeah, uh, what were you've obviously played for some big clubs, but how did that game at Hamden compare to some of the games that you would have been involved in prior to that? Well, Hamden Park is a beautiful stadium, to be honest. 
is the stadium where Zinedine Zidane made the volley with Real Madrid against Bayern Leverkusen. Uh, it's one of the best stadium that uh, I have played, to be honest, even if I play in Bernabeu, in Barcelona, in, in France, in Parc des Principes, but uh, Hamden Park, to be honest, and Celtic Park, and uh, Ibrox, all beautiful stadium, but it's special because living is a small club, so you have all the supporters of Ibs and some very small part of Livingston in yellow, but the yellow win, you know, so we are very happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you... Oh, Hibs were the bigger team going into that, but having spoken to Derek Lilly last month, um, even with the the problems you guys were facing off the park, there was a lot of belief that you could go on and win the cup. Yes, because we are very like this. The team was very like this by the administration, and we are very strong, to be honest. Marvin Andrews, uh, Oscar Rubio, David Fernandez, uh, Derek. Uh, I can say I, uh, Roddy McKenzie, the goalkeeper. I can Lee Michael. Uh, I can see all the. I can say all the player. Honestly, we were we were very good, and we make the semi final to the other cup. We lose against Celtic, you know, in the same year. We win the, this cup and we lose in semi final against Celtic. So I think really that we were a very good team this year, and uh, we are confident in ourselves. Yeah. It Obviously, I can't. When what age was I? I think I was three, and um, when you played in that final, and um, not to try and make you feel too old, but um, you you don't see. Um, I know I've touched on it a few times, but you really don't see sort of smaller provincial clubs like Livingston doing these things very often. So when you do get the chance, um, well, even like so, so many years on, I'm here speaking to you because of the achievements nearly twenty years ago. Now this is the opportunity for these players um, on Sunday. Yes, because uh, as you say, it was in 2004, so many years ago. I would like to come back in the past, but uh, that's why um, I think that they have a very good opportunity to become some legend of the Livingston supporter. And it's very important for the people to feel, to have an ident identification to the team. And I think that 2004 is too long now. They must to win something to little by little, build something strong to have a very good team for the few years. Yeah. Um, won't touch on it too much. I try and keep this video as positive um, as I can in the article as well. It'll go out. Um, but obviously, um, whenever you go into your Wikipedia and stuff, and obviously headlines are headlines, but the way that you left Livingston with the wages and things like that is is the first thing that comes up. Um, did that... Did that take any memories away from your time at Livingston or do you remember the positives over the bad? I try to keep all the positive. I try to keep, even if I, I have been injured for the first year, even if I live by the door outside, <laughs> you know, it's, it was quite difficult, but um, it's part of the past. It's part of the history of some football player. I keep always Livingston supporter on the club in my heart. And uh, it's part of my beautiful life that I had. So I still one of supporter in the world about Livingston. Yeah. And I suppose for you, looking back on how those times were and the difficulties off the park, to see the club now having similar success to what you guys had, but perhaps more importantly, there's no jeopardy of the club going away. It's Livingston are very, very settled off the park now. Yes, obviously... Uh, as I tell you, I'm very happy for them. Uh, they come from very far. That's been difficult season, difficult years for Livingston. But now they look to have a, a good a good team, a good uh, foundation to build something very high. And I wish that they start with the winning the cup because it will be very good for them. Yeah. Um, just on you, um, you touched on a bit before we hit record, but um, what, what are you doing now? Um, coaching in France? Yes, I'm coaching uh, in third division, third division in France, in the team. We are in the second position just now in the league. So 13 games to go. We are going to see what we, what we can do after the 13th of March when we start. We are 13 games to try to do something good. But uh, it's quite difficult because we are amateur, we are not professional. So a lot of people working and it's not very easy. But uh, it's part of the football. I, I love football. I was a football player and I am a coach. 
is the only thing that I know to do. Yeah. So if you go up to the if you go up a division this season, will you have the chance to go and take the club professional, or will it always be amateur? Well, it will be quite difficult. I, I wish that we can do something important, but after you need money, you need some supporter, you need some uh, people who put money to build a, a, a team better. It's not so easy, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. And for your own coaching aspirations, how far do you think? You've obviously had a great career um, on the park, but on the touchline, what is your ambition? I want to go as high as possible, you know? I was always very hungry about football. Hungry, hungry, I, I want to eat. So, <laughs> so I want to be as, as high as possible and be in, in Premier, well, I don't know, in, in the top league somewhere, in France, in Spain, in Scotland, everywhere, but I want to have a professional team to, to try to, to do something nice. Yeah, so if David Martindale ever leaves Livingston, um, we can send your application away in a postcard. Yes, I will do it. <laughs> I will, but I wish I wish him the best for the new weeks, new months, new for the final. For the but if one day he leaves, perhaps I will pretend to be in Scotland. I don't know. Brilliant.